the great ziggurat has been secured my kvk is finally coming to an end and i'm happy to announce that we were the victors wind camp alongside water has secured king's land and honestly this kvk meant a lot to us because this is going to bring us home our fifth star that's right 1568 the Wu Tilla clan bringing home the moon which we were on track to getting last kvk before we got betrayed if you guys missed that video that's on the channel as well also there was a little bit of drama in this kvk i guess it's just kind of old rehash drama between our kingdom and kingdom 1534 and so this kvk meant a lot to everybody on a multiple different levels and the evidence for that is just how hard everybody involved had to fight in order to get this victory this did not come easy by any means king's land was an emotional roller coaster to be honest with you guys it really could have gone either way and let me just say this at the beginning of the video so that way there is no confusion at all i have tremendous respect for our campmates in 2098 our allies in water camp of 1256 and 1596 and i also have tremendous respect especially for earth camp because we clashed with earth camp the entire kvk 1534 and 2332 when they worked together in king's land they were an absolute powerhouse and this goes without saying but i also have tremendous respect for the players in fire camp even though wind and fire didn't really clash too much there was constant fighting going on between fire and water so i have a lot of respect for everybody involved in this kvk i do not want that to get confused because later in the video we will go over a little bit of old like rehashed drama between us and 1534 and i knew going into this kvk that 1534 was going to be a strong enemy because i've previously praised them as our allies two kvks ago but we'll get into all that later in the video but before we jump into all this of course what's going on guys cheers i've gotten some comments about where i got these ridiculous tankards in my videos okay i'm gonna link to them in the description below it's gonna be an affiliate link but honestly you i don't care i don't care honestly you could buy them if you want i've just had people asking so i figured i'll put it in the description then we can do a proper cheers okay let me first just set the stage because i've mentioned this kvk once on my channel but i haven't done any live streams and maybe one day i'll discuss why i don't stream my kvks but just as a recap we were in wind camp down here 1568 and we were allied with water camp going up against fire and earth so the top of the map versus the bottom of the map which means we were clashing directly with 1534 and 2332 in our first zone we also fought them in altars and eventually everybody made their way to king's land so how did the kvk actually progress so of course kvk started win starts in the bottom right corner and the first zone that we fight earth camp is san pedro this fighting started i think on march 27th if i'm not mistaken now here i actually have a screenshot from that zone about an hour after the pass was opened you can see in the top right corner the exact portion of the map that this is i don't know why it says lucerne here because if you come over to the map lucerne is actually the top portion of the map so there must have just been like some sort of graphical bug or maybe during the update they changed the names of the zones i don't actually know i mean you could see that this is the actual zone we were fighting in and after about an hour we kind of clashed right in the middle of the zone here and you could see off on the left that for the most part we directly fought up against 32. you could see that they have their fortress right here and i think our first fort drop was actually a failure and then the rest of the zone we kind of slowly just pushed them out so i think the first like two hours or maybe the first hour was like a little bit rough and then we kind of just steamrolled the rest of the zone over the next two days you could see that we ended up fighting mostly 32 and our allies one ee8 ended up fighting up against 1534 we thought that 1534 would be the ones to build directly towards us because because of course there was a little bit of a beef there but as it turns out apparently not now this screenshot was from two days afterwards this was 329 at 19 UTC you could tell because my power is about 2 million lower here and you could see that we have the 34 forts kind of near the back of the zone here we have SJ is still there we have 34 here but for the most part you could see that 1568 so this is our kingdom along with EV we've pushed up all the way up to their pass all the way up at the top here and so at this point it's kind of just like a slow burn battle of the farms right this is like the zone where people just fill all the flags and forts and all the rallies with basically farm troops and you just battle farm versus farm that's a lot of times how this zone goes we even have markers for the next time that we can start to burn these forts over here so they put a ton of forts in this zone honestly they spent a ton of credits after that we had i think three altar fights up against those guys and we won the first altar fight 
the second one was at I think 4 a.m for us and so not many people were online I think we they definitely took the altar during that time but I think we kept it as a stalemate for quite a while I wasn't there I was sleeping so I don't know for sure but once the third altar came around we ended up winning that one as well so I think we won two altars they won one really it's just open field fighting with mud march nothing too exciting going on there over on the other side of the map the water camp was pushed back pretty definitively by fire camp um they also had a few days worth of fighting here in the zone it's not like they were locked out of the zone immediately there was some good fighting going on there but truthfully i wasn't paying too much attention to what was happening over here because i was focusing on our zone going into this i think we expected fire to take this zone five i think that was just I mean when you look at the power breakdown between fire and water these stats look really close right like if you look at the total power here the total power here the total kill points here water actually has more kill points you would think that this is going to be a really close fight one of the things that our kingdom likes to do is they like to do a sort of power breakdown of like the main alliance and their farms and so that's what you can see here fires like main fighting force was 13.2 billion and 10.6 billion whereas for water it was 11.6 billion and 10.4 billion so even though the total stats looked a lot closer when it comes to raw fighting power we figured fire probably would take the zone and they ended up doing just that the next bit of fighting was at pass seven and this was kind of a stalemate right we fought at pass seven for a couple of days we quickly found out that if we let them take the pass we could actually launch rallies at the pass that we can then buff from behind the pass and we could pretty consistently get results like this where I mean the kill points were just insane the seven trade was pretty crazy you know we could go through and look here like a lot of these we had some pretty wild reports from pass seven chiwi an absolute giga chad when it comes to his archer rallies absolutely phenomenal I mean like a lot of these reports from that past seven were from Chiwi they're just it's just crazy how many of these that we we actually got like it's wild so really the plan was to kind of just let them hold the pass and we'll just burn through as many of their troops as we can with as many good trades as we can and I'm not going to sit here and say that all of our troops uh, all of our trades are positive they weren't they had some good trades as well they had some good pushes definitely a stalemate we couldn't push past their forts they couldn't push past ours and like how most past sevens go it was kind of just like a, a stalemate until King's Land comes around right like that's really what past seven is and then King's Land was insane King's Land was like three days worth of back and forth fighting between us and earth on the right side of the map and with fire and water on the left side of the map and pretty soon after King's Land opened fire came through and took waters past eight they still had a ton of flag lines in the bottom here and that was pretty much the goal right what we figured was whoever gets the 2v1 in King's Land is probably going to win because up until this point even up till King's Land knowing who was going to win was up in the air like going into this I thought it was probably a 50 50 50 right I thought King's Land 50 50 maybe we win maybe we don't who knows if water crumbled too quickly then it would be earth and fire versus us we knew we would lose that and of course if fire or earth crumbled first then we knew that we could 2v1 the other one and that would be most likely a victory for us immediately entering the zone earth was back flagging like crazy they absolutely stuffed everything in front of their past eights dozens of flags like literally dozens of flags stacked on top of each other because again this was going to be a marathon it was going to be who can last the longest which side is going to crumble first and honestly it was you know the first six or eight hours I thought went really well for wind camp I feel like we did super super well we were crushing once earth came online and it was their uptime then they absolutely clapped us back and I woke up and I was like oh my god maybe this is it like maybe we're gonna lose King's Land here then we ended up having a second wind pushed them back and started burning them again on Saturday which was insane and then later Saturday night we started to get some pushback again where we started to get burned as well Sunday we further pushed them back a little bit and then later Sunday night they had kind of their last final massive push and we were able to hold so overall the performance from everyone involved was insane once earth gave up fire was pretty soon close to follow and throughout the entire time water camp held I mean sure they might have been getting pushed back maybe a little bit kind of slow losing flags right but they had some nasty reports coming out of some water camp garrisons that were just absolutely draining fire camp more than I think anybody anticipated again going into this I didn't know what to think if water was going to hold or not but they held as long as they needed to and we ended up getting the W so how did we actually perform myself and as a kingdom 
in this KBK to get the W. First, let me share with you guys sort of where my account was at right when KBK started. I had 87.2 million power. I think I rose up to like 88 million during, I think we had like an Alliance mobilization event and then pre KBK training. I don't remember what the reason was, but I got, I didn't touch 89 million, but I was, I was close. I think I was like 88.7 or something like that. I had 19.3 million deads and I had 2.15 billion kill points going into this KBK. And by the time King's land wrapped up, your boy had 40.4 million kills. So this was my best KVK performance by quite a bit. Actually, my last KVK, I had 33.5 million kills and 1.7 million deads. So getting 40.4 million kills in a single KVK, I feel really good about that. This is what my hall of heroes currently looks like. Okay. 2 million, 38,000 dead troops. We got a pretty nice breakdown. Obviously all of my infantry went into garrisons. All of my archers went into into rallies I barely lost any cavalry in this entire kvk we really didn't use that many cav rallies if anything I think my cavalry that died was probably in the rallies of my camp mates I think one ee8 had like one or two players that were doing cav rallies I think that's really all that this came from most of my deads archers and infantry and that's actually pretty good because that allowed me to field with both my cavalry marches all the way to the end of kvk and I will be going over what my best performing marches were in just a minute this first column here is where where I took my dead troops. The second column here is T4 kills. Third column is T5 kills, total kills, and then my KDP score. So you can see here that like 75% of my dead troops came from past seven and King's land. Whereas my total kills were a pretty good breakdown between a majority from past seven and King's land. And then first pass opening 10.7 million kills. I felt really good about that considering how many deads I took. And then the altars, I got more kills in the altars than I did for the first zone. So felt really really good about that at the very bottom here is basically the requirement for my kingdom so they required that I got 20 million kills I got 40. They wanted me to get 1.5 million deads. I got two. So overall, this was my best performing KBK and it's not even close really like this was it. And it better be because this was a screenshot that I took right at the end of King's land. My bags were absolutely drained. You could see I have like no, no resources at all left over here. My power was super struggling. So I'm glad we got the W I'm glad it was worth it. And I'm super happy with my total performance, but how did the kingdom itself perform? how did 1568 do our kingdom got 4.3 billion kills with 76.3 billion kill points total for the entire kvk we took 336 million dead troops and some of the individual stats from these players was just actually crazy so if we take a look here hamoud coming in at first place 3.4 million deads 166.5 million kills 3 billion kill points in a single kvk absolutely ridiculous of course we have burger we have mimi we've got carl here in fourth place carl is some of his garrisons were clutch he was in the field all day every day for king's land absolutely insane 4.3 million deads 130 million kills 2.3 billion kill points in a single kvk bro that's insane now the last bit of stats i want to go over is actually the stats for all the kingdoms throughout the entire kvk and here you can see most importantly the power change for each kingdom the kill points gained for each kingdom and the dead troops gained for each kingdom. So here we can see 2139 from fire camp actually lost the most amount of power out of any kingdom here. The chart itself is organized by kill points gained. So you can see our kingdom 1568 absolutely clapped in the kill point department. We got 76 billion kill points. Absolutely insane here. 1534, of course, coming in close at number two. I mean, that's still nine, it's still 9 billion behind, but obviously a very respectable performance. Our allies coming in third place there for kill points and then 2139 coming in fourth and then of course you can see the number of dead troops that each kingdom got off on the right here everyone got at least 300 million dead troops here it looks like 2139 had the most dead troops out of everybody it looks like 1596 actually got 250 million dead troops but still this was a crazy kvk and i mean these stats just prove it everyone basically went all out by the end of king's land as far as i know this data was collected by 1534 i believe so hopefully this is something that everyone can agree on so huge round of applause to everyone who was involved here of course huge shout out to everyone in 1568 but especially the leadership in our kingdom absolutely insane i trust these guys like nobody else in the game rk and miss mayhem run the show and they couldn't do it without the support of all the insane leaders we have here 
in 1568. Mons, Ryan, Panda, Chiwi stepping up with those rallies. Okay. I don't want to list off everyone's name because then people are going to feel bad if I forget somebody, but there's a reason that I've been in 1568 for literally years. These guys know the game better than basically anybody that I've ever met. Their field strategy, flagging strategy, rally strategy, garrisons, activity, everyone here like crazy performance. So huge shout out to the entire Alliance and especially our leaders. Okay. With all the stats out of the way, let's go over which marches I was using and what I found to be the most effective throughout this KBK. I think it goes without saying, cause I've mentioned this in my other videos, Liu Che Alex was the star of the show. This was my best performing March in pretty much every single zone. Obviously we threw on a couple of support skills. We had Joan of Arc skill. This is a no brainer. 25% more normal damage for Liu Che or Gorgo is just wild. And then I threw on Belisarius as well. So if I'm hitting somebody with less than 50%, 25% more damage, it's just insane. The instant proc synergy with Alexander and Liu Che can't be understated. Totally absurd March. Absurd. In second place was probably a tie, but I'm going to give it to my Zhuge Liang with Herman. I feel like this March didn't perform that well in altars, which was surprising. I don't know exactly why, probably because it's so slow still, but in big open field fights where Zhuge Liang and Herman are kind of safe and they're not being targeted, the AOE damage from these guys just chips and it just over time, you get so much value out of this March. It's actually insane. Plus the debuff, the poison debuff on Herman is wild. So I'm giving this the second place ranking out of all of my different lineups here. And just to be clear, the bastion skills on here weren't anything insane. We had 10% attack. 10% March speed, 10% attack and 10% defense. I ran these on my Zhuge Liang the entire time. Okay. Probably some of the weaker bastions that I used and it still performed insanely well. They of course benefit tremendously from that March speed though. Coming in at a close third place was my Huo primary with Joan of Arc secondary. As you guys know, in my video, if you saw where I did some early Belisarius testing, I discovered that Huo Joan, if you've got a better set of gear, and a better set of armaments it's probably better to do huo with joan that's just my anecdotal experience and based on some dps testing but halfway through the kvk i switched from nevsky joan to huo joan and immediately i saw an improvement especially for pass seven in kingsland this army was popping off i ran it with the by bar skill for 20 percent attack and i ran it with the william skill for another 20 percent attack 15% March speed. And then outside of Alliance territory, 10% more damage is insane for this combination. The DPS here is through the roof and then coming in fourth and fifth place. Again, I think this is kind of a tie. I'm going to give the edge to my Guan Yu with CPO. Anybody saying that Guan CPO is an outdated March is uh, they're losing their mind. This is such a good March double AOE. Very, very good performer here. We gave them more stats from the Richard Bastion. And I also gave them the El Cid Bastion. So if I fall below 50%, I deal 25% more damage and I get more March speed so I can run back to the city if I need to. And then finally, we have to talk about my Nevsky William again, halfway through the KVK is when I switched to the secondaries here. I put my worst gear on my Nevsky and the William behind him and still performed really, really well here. The support skills were kind of what I had left over. We had the tier one Ramsey skill where you just get a 10% chance for healing and defense. And then of course we had Boudica. She gives you some rage and a little bit of healing factor here as well. So those are my four lineups that I was using all KVK and five marching it. This was probably my best five March lineup I have had in any KVK. And of course I want to back that up with some screenshots here. Now this screenshot actually I took because this was in the altar where I actually tested out my Huo Nevsky because I got some people telling me that was a really good March. This was the best report that I could get out of them. I think, I don't think I have any other reports from this army, but this one was kind of an outlier. I think, I don't know what happened with my Huo Nevsky. It didn't perform as good as people were saying like my expectations are really high for this March in altars it's good definitely a March that you can use in altars it just wasn't I, I was really missing the AoE from Joan I feel like Joan you kind of need her in the altar whether it's with Nevsky or with Huo that's my opinion that's what I'm looking at here so pretty good report there moving on we have and I'm just gonna have you guys brace yourselves because a lot of these are probably gonna be Liu Che Alex okay here we've got a million kill points to 250,000 here we've got a Guan CPO report a million kill points to 300k here we have my Zhuge Liang Herman we have 900,000 to 
40,000. Here we've got another Liuche Alex, 1.8 million to 474,000. Zhuge Liang with Herman, 1.2 million to 550K. This was back when I was still using my Huo with William, 776K to 228K. 935k for my Guan CPO up against 300k for the enemies here. Here we've got a nice little report from a garrison. We've got 7.6 million kill points to the enemies a million not even a million insane kill points right here is crazy another Liu Che with Alex 836k to 184k here we've got Liu Che Alex 530,000 to 131,000 here we've got still Huo with my William a million kill points to 474 here we've got Guan CPO a million to 334 here we've got a rally report from Chiwi up against that pass and absolutely insane trade two to one basically a two to one kill point trade here and I mean the the debt sev wound just wild just a wild trade I, I Chiwi is a literal archer rally god here we've got another rally 43 million kill points to 21 million kill points two to one dead trade here two to one sevun trade like just insane stuff another like look at this bro oh my god Chiwi Chiwi what are you doing to these guys brother what are you doing to these guys 125 million kill points to 43.5 million just insanity in more than two to one seven trade here just a wild wild rally report and i think getting reports like this are kind of why like past seven if we didn't drain them this much during past seven i don't know how king's line would have gone honestly and i think you know even still at this point a lot of people were still using their farms by the way so they were putting a lot of farm stuff into the past we were filling a lot of rallies with farms so you know it is what it is but yeah some of these reports were just wild here's another one 51 million to 32 million like just unbelievable right unbelievable stuff Here we've got a nice report from my nevsky joan we got 576k to 176k here we've got another liu che alex almost half a million kill points to 150k wild guan cpo a little too a little almost two to one trade here i think actually if i'm not if i'm remembering correctly because you could see the sev wounds were the same on both sides i think i was using full tier four in this army because i was just goofing off so I was just I thought that was funny now here we moved on to the Huo Joan and this is where we started getting some crazy reports with Huo we got 1.2 million to 234k Guan CPO pulling weight 811k to 141 Yu Liang with Herman 737 to 100k like insane stuff here this one my god we have 3.1 million kill points the 1 million for the enemies this was just a wild report felt real good about that one here we've got another crazy huo joan report 3.5 million to 1.5 million here we've got guan cpo again 2.7 million to 1.7 million another liu che alex almost 3 million kill points to 650k like bro that is insane stuff here 1.9 million kill points for huo joan to the 350k for the enemy 1.2 million for the liu che alex to the 120k like a 10 to 1 kill point trade there just wild stuff 2.2 million to the 264,000 for another another Liu Che Alex just absolutely dominating Liu Che Alex again 3 million kill points to 600k here's another Liu Che Alex 2.2 million to 385k another Liu Che Alex 1.2 million to 275k another Liu Che Alex a million to 162,000 Zhuge Liang 455k to 60k like bro here we've got Liu Che Alex again 814k to 100 71k here we've got a million to 180,000 another Huo Joan 1.4 to 300k here we've got again Liu Che Alex almost 2 million to 372,000 here we have Guan CPO 800k to 192k another Liu Che Alex 1.1 million to 230k Huo Joan a million to 230k 1.5 to 350 I mean I think you get the point we can keep going through these if we need to it, they're all I mean they're all crazy I forgot how many of these I took a picture of that's wild Liu Che Alex absolutely popping off definitely like it it's like a cheat code basically Alex the instant proc it, you just go in and out and you're just farming kills basically okay now earlier in the video I mentioned that there was a little bit of drama between our kingdom and kingdom 1534 in earth camp okay in this part of the video really I'm just going to be responding to another youtuber who made a video about this and they actually streamed a lot of the kvk they go by the name archer syndicate you may have heard of them you may have watched their videos I think before this kvk I think I had watched maybe 
one of their videos. Obviously I had known the name. I've seen it floating around YouTube recommended things like that, but I don't know where I got a message in game on March 15th from them saying that they're going to zero me this KBK for content. This is, I think the first message I've ever gotten from Archer syndicate before. I don't think we've ever talked on like discord prior to this or anything like that. And so I know who he is because he's a content creator, but I, I don't like know him. Right. And so I'm kind of just like joking around. I'm like, oh, certainly this has been a while. Right. Cause I got zeroed back in like 2021 or something like that. Surely it would be good content. Right. And he said for sure. And then I sent him a friend request. And after that, he posted a video literally one day after he said he was going to zero me for content. And he said, my spicy kvk drama king's land betrayals hatred and revenge and so i saw this video someone sent it to me and i was like okay i thought he was just kidding like i thought we were joking around and truthfully i think he still was but there's a whole part of the video dedicated to spicy drama and he mentions me in this video and so i held my tongue the entire kvk all right I didn't respond to this at all. I didn't mention it at all. I didn't message him about this at all. And I just sat back and said, let's see what happens. Let's see how the KVK unfolds. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and we're going to watch this, just this portion of his video. And I'm just going to pause and kind of react to some of the, the claims that he makes in this video. But before I do that, I need to be very clear here. Okay. I have no beef with Archer syndicate. Okay. In fact, there might actually be, I haven't messaged him about this, but there might be a potential video idea that I have that we might be able to collab on so archer syndicate if you're watching this you want to collab dm me or message me on discord i i have no bad blood with him at all i promise okay i have no bad blood with any of the content creators it's just it's a mobile game like who cares right like we're just we're just making videos about a mobile game it's really not that serious okay but on principle i do feel like it is important to respond to this because he makes a lot of claims about my kingdom that i'm in that i don't think are true and i feel like just on principle i have to address it now the other thing that i want to say before i go through this is that i'm pretty sure the beef is pretty much squashed with 1568 and 1534 that is at least my read on it or at the very least it seems like neither kingdom cares about it anymore we've got to duke it out we got to kill each other on the field and truthfully again i respect how much they were fighting this kvk Okay, it was insane. So again, I have nothing against them, but it's important for the reputation of 1568 that I at least address some of these claims because well, I don't think they're true. Before we get into the drama, I don't want to confuse anybody because we are now talking about an older KVK, two KVKs ago, but in that KVK, we were in fire camp and we were allied with water camp, which contained 1534. The biggest issue stems from my kingdom 1534 and their relationship with 1568, which yep. is also Omniarch's kingdom. So I think that's pretty funny. And just to be clear, he says Omniarch's kingdom. It's not my kingdom. I'm here. I love playing with the leadership here, but I play no leadership role at all. Okay. So it's, it is not my kingdom. The relationship I can say is extremely sour. Our kingdom absolutely hates everybody in 1568. I haven't heard a single nice thing being said about 1568 in my Alliance chat. That's really funny because up until this KBK, we completely forgot about whatever little beef we had with 1534. Like it literally was not a big deal at all. And so to hear that is like, oh really? Like you guys still care about that. Okay. Interesting. No one has ever said a single nice thing about them. And the drama stems from our old KBK, the last two KBKs ago, where my kingdom 1534 was allied with 1568. It's important to note, I wasn't in this KBK. I'm just going to take the evidence that the king gave me which i can't show but the evidence that he gave me and the word of the people in my kingdom okay so he's saying that the drama stems from a kvk that we were allied with 1534 i remember that kvk but he wasn't there and he can't show any evidence of his claims i feel like if you're going to attack an entire kingdom's reputation publicly in a youtube video and then not supply any evidence and also you weren't even there so you don't actually know if it happened that seems like well they actually have a word for that it's called hearsay unverified unaffiliated official information gained or acquired from another and not part of one's direct knowledge. And there's a reason that hearsay is not allowed in court during testimonies because it's garbage. It's meaningless. It's just something that you heard. So the next two and a half minutes are all hearsay, but I'm going to let him cook. We'll see what he says. Yeah, it ended up betraying 1534, which was my kingdom. And it pretty much stemmed down betrayal. He said we betrayed them. That's a pretty serious attack on our reputation that you don't know for sure because you weren't there and you don't have evidence to show Oh, okay. To 1568 saying my kingdom 1534 was faking their DKP. If you don't know what that is, 
it is pretty much a point system where you show how many kills and deads you get relative to your power and it pretty much just shows how good your kingdom is fighting if you have high dkp you're fighting really well if you have a lower dkp you may not be fighting as good so they were saying our kingdom was faking the dkp point let me just pause right there i'm not sure he explained dkp well he said high dkp means you're fighting well low dkp means you're not fighting well that's an oversimplification of the system in the kvk that he's referring to the way that we calculated dkp is that we would take your dead count multiply it by 100 we would take your t4 kill count multiply it by 10 and your t5 kill count and multiply it by 20. this is a good way to measure how many kills a kingdom got or an alliance got while still weighting more heavily the t5 kills and also putting a lot of emphasis on the dead kills because you know if you get a lot of kills but you're not sacrificing any of the troops well then you're probably not the one responsible for pushing across the map burning the flags putting the flags in the garrison right and so you have to have a way of incorporating deads as well because taking deads is important but he says here that it means you're fighting well that is not what it means it implies you're fighting well you're pro if you have a high dkp you are probably fighting well but it's not perfect for example if you take you know 410,000 tier 5 units and they're all siege and you crash them into an enemy city well you're going to take a ton of deads from that and that has no direct impact on the fighting at all and so there are ways that you can cheese the dkp system and so one thing that that a lot of alliances and kings will do is they will keep track of you know their own dkp and all their kills and deads and everything but they'll also keep track of other kingdoms as well so that way you know you could try and see like oh well are they taking pointless deads just to inflate their score now he also mentioned that we accused them of faking their dkp and on this point there definitely was some distrust amongst our uh, leadership and looking at some things that were happening in water camp we're going to touch on that in just a second but i think the general consensus was that there was a, a little bit of suspicious behavior but it wasn't like we weren't saying that their entire performance was faked right because the truth is we were allied with them and they did fight really well in that kvk i even addressed it in a video back then this is what i had to say what it is i also want to give a huge shout out to obviously our allies they were there basically the whole time especially our camp mates so i just wanted to throw that out there let's hear what he has to say Thanks. And the reason this happened was because we had a higher DKP basically score than 1568 at the time. Okay, so that's just not true. He said 1534 had a higher DKP than us in that KBK, and that's false. I actually have the data right here. This data wasn't even compiled by us. It was compiled by one of our allies. You could see 1568's DKP score was 56 billion, and 1534 was 52 billion. What he meant to say was that Water Camp as a whole had a higher DKP than Fire Camp. Okay, Water Camp had 183 million DKP and Fire Camp had 166 million DKP, but it is not true that 1534 had a higher DKP than our kingdom. And with KVKs, if you don't know this, with Diplo, which means chatting with other kingdoms, whoever has the highest DKP usually gets the star and gets the Ziggurat or the Lost Temple. So that's usually how that works. Um, that, you know, of course, DKP is a big contributing factor to who gets the Zig, right? I'm not going to pretend like that's not the case. If you perform really well and you've got the stats to prove it, of course. As I mentioned earlier, DKP is not perfect. It's important to know that typically your performance throughout that KVK is also taken into account. Otherwise, like I said before, people would just carelessly take deads all the time so that way they can inflate their dead score and then at the end they could be like oh well got a higher dkp so i guess we get the zig it's like no 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 you still have to fight effectively and efficiently throughout the entire kvk dkp is not the only factor that kingdoms use to determine who gets the zig that's ridiculous and just to illustrate that point as i mentioned before water had a higher dkp but they had lower kill points so fire as a camp had higher kill points than water and our kingdom had more kills than any of their kingdoms especially in the tier 5 department but the only differentiating factor between our dkp and theirs was that they had way more dead troops they got way more dead and they still didn't get as many kills as us and again deads are important to take but this is a great example of like okay hang on you took 200 million more dead troops and you still didn't get as many kill points as us like that sounds inefficient something happened there and so when it came down to getting the zig it's like okay technically your dkp is higher but should we reward less efficient fighting styles right because if that's the case well then you could just drag out zone battles you could drag out a zone five zone battle for a week and you could just constantly take deads from rallies so you want to get a good dkp but like you actually want to perform well and fight effectively and efficiently on top of that and obviously that usually creates a bit of drama so because our kingdom had a higher dkp 
1568 said we were faking it and again not true their camp had more dkp not their kingdom they used two pieces of evidence first of all well really one piece of evidence and that was while the altar of darkness was running we were taking a large amount of dead troops and at another point we also took dead troops when there was no fighting at all and it really came down to two miscommunications first of all while the altar of darkness was running for our kingdom and pretty much the whole map 1534 was still fighting in i think it was their zone five so there was these are the dates that the pass and the altars opened Okay, so they entered zone five on 8-2 and altar started at 8-12. So you're telling me that you were you were fighting in zone five five 10 days after the pass opening i don't think i've ever seen a kvk that take 10 days in zone five zone five is not worth fighting for 10 days what rewards are in zone five that's worth fighting for 10 days and even being generous and saying that it took them six seven eight days to close out that zone i just i mean i don't think it was 10. if you frequently see 10 day zone five fights let me know in the comment section below still definitely some fighting ongoing there and that is why people were taking deads during the altar of darkness and then the second time when people took deads it was someone hit a city with their barbarian marches and so they took like 400,000 t5 deads definitely sucks to be that guy look this kvk was so many months ago getting screenshots and everything from that kvk kind of challenging but here you could see i mean look this this is not a bar march okay this is actually a, a gathering march allegedly but hang on four hundred and ten thousand units guys i don't know anyone who farms with four hundred and ten thousand units especially when you look at the kill points here tier five you're trying to tell me you're farming with four hundred and ten thousand tier five yeah, bro, come on brother come on look hey is this evidence of faking deads no it's not evidence okay it's it's not technically evidence but like it's kind of suspicious is it not i mean I mean, like i don't know anyone who plays like that that's crazy now do accidents happen sure okay sure you can accidentally hit a city you drag and drop oops right oopsie daisies but to even have this march full of tier five in the to begin with like brother come on now now is it possible that this wasn't a misclicked gathering march but instead was a legitimate attempt at looting this player's city who has a proper garrison and five million troops without a full hospital i mean i i guess it's possible I guess maybe there was a, a rally like hitting the city at that exact moment and this player maybe thought that they didn't have troops left and they just were mistaken and so they attacked while the rally was still running or maybe they had a lag spike and they just accidentally hit I, I, I look I don't know I'm trying to be as generous as possible here because again this is not evidence but it's it seems a little bit suspicious to me that's all I'm saying and that created a ton of controversy between 1568 and 1534 and then it pretty much ended up resulting in 1568 blocking off the king's land pass for our kingdom who were their allies by the way and zeroing a bunch of cities and basically flexing about it and the only time they stopped zeroing was when our king just said all right you can have the ziggurat you can take the star because if we ended up going through like a full-on i'm gonna stop him right there okay i literally have a screenshot of what king's land looked like before they disconnected their flags everything in red was the water camp everything in purple was our camp you can see that both of us are touching the ziggurat here and this screenshot was taken during the heat of the moment before they disconnected their flags and you can see here we have a coalition marker i know the four is in the way but it says no city hits just flags and field so the intention of leadership was literally don't hit player cities we're not hitting player cities now i will give him this there were two farm accounts that did get hit during this time frame okay it was not our intention those players were excited they wanted to fight they hit farm cities that sucks that's our bad okay that's our bad main accounts were not hit here we didn't block them off from their past we didn't cut them out of king's land the only thing that happened was we tapped two flags okay we tapped two as far as i know undefended flags there was a heated argument in a discord call between all of the alliance leaders and we requested that they disconnect their flags from the zig that's why there was a red line on that screenshot you just saw okay the reason that we were so heated over them saying that they deserved the zig is because we thought they were going to betray us because there was evidence and screenshots of conversations that i have suggesting that some other camps may be interested in a 2v1 or 3v1 against fire camp so we were on edge now as you can see here i've redacted the name of this player because i don't want to give away their information this is rk his real name is in this discord name so i blocked that 
that out i did that in the last drama video but he's the one that gave me the screenshot obviously I, this was not my screenshot and look i'm not gonna leak all the conversations with people from other kingdoms from eight months ago or however long ago that was but that's why we got aggressive when they said that they deserved the zig and this was the final map i showed this in my video seven months ago okay you can see they disconnected where we asked them to and then we surrounded the zig and that was it they still got their maximum rewards that they could get of course they weren't in our camp so we couldn't like share the star unfortunately but there was no blocking off of their past there was no like hours and hours of zeroing other players main cities there was none of that it was like their flags that we tapped didn't even burn out before there was a resolution it was like a 20 30 minute ordeal it was literally it wasn't a big deal at all which is why I didn't even really cover it in this video because it was it was like a small disagreement and then they gave us the zig at civil war it would have pretty much ended up in both sides losing the kvk so pretty much what I'm gonna say I'm gonna spit it out right now and get all the controversy on my channel 1568 was sore losers and because they had a lower DKP than 1534. Again, he's operating on not correct. Infra this is literally not true. Okay. We outperformed them in that KVK. They performed really well. I have a lot of respect for them. But again, he, like to spread this kind of misinformation is like really frustrating. So then I started to wonder like, okay, why would he, why would he bring up all of these points that he doesn't show any evidence for? And he wasn't even there for it. Like what would his motive be to be doing this? Right. And with the amount of fighting that's probably going to be in this KVK. 400 million is pretty fair and something I think that's going to allow me to do that is really that I have access to a lot more resources now the king inflated the crap out of my account with resources the king inflated the crap out of his resources my man just migrated to 1534 and he got hundreds of millions of resources from the king surely it wouldn't be a bribe right I mean surely not the king of this kingdom reached out to me once I messaged someone from their kingdom and he was like if you come we'll just like we'll hook you up with a few hundred million resources and I was like you know what your kingdom looks good <laughs> I'll just come along and they're like, yeah, I'll That's take a bribe. Right. Okay, because, yeah, I'll take a bribe. Why not? Set me up for a candy cane. You heard the man. He said he'll take a bribe. Li okay, listen, look, I, at this point, I'm just goofing off. Okay. Do I think the king paid him hundreds of millions of resources to slander our kingdom in a video? No, I don't think so. I think, by the way, this was an interview on Shappy Gaming's channel. I'll link to it down below. It was a great interview. I've been interviewed by Shappy. I love Shappy. I think they were just making a joke about bribes. I don't think he actually took a bribe. Okay. But like, it's kind I mean, it's kind of funny when you look at, when you look at the, I mean, come on, like, bro, come on. So that's pretty much it. That's why there was drama. Basically, honestly, it stemmed from a miscommunication as to who should get the zig. We were paranoid. They were going to betray us because of a bunch of screenshots that we had. We asked them to disconnect. They disconnected. That was it. It was a 20 minute thing. Wasn't even worth covering in a video. And I didn't even want to respond to the drama until after the KVK was over. And again, it's just on principle. Okay. It's just on principle. I have no problems with Archer Syndicate. I think he's 16 years old. I'm almost twice his age. Okay. It's really, it doesn't matter. This is a mobile game. Who cares? Again, there might be a cool video idea we could do together. So there's no bad blood between us. Okay. And again, I don't think our kingdoms really care about this drama and anymore either. So it is what it is, but on principle, don't put your reputation on the line for information that you did not witness firsthand and you don't, you can't show, or you're not willing to, or whatever the reason is, he didn't show any evidence in that entire portion of the video. Did you see any screenshots? Did you see any video? Where was the video of us swarming down their main cities? Where was the video of us attacking their flags? Where were the screenshots of the battle reports? Where was, there was nothing. There was nothing but that's it the drama was blown way out of proportion and at the end of the day well at the end of the day look who's in king's land baby look who's in king's land huh but in all seriousness this was a really good kvk everyone fought really well 1534 fought really well 32 fought really well our allies in water camp exceeded my expectations in king's land shout out to fire camp for giving them hell and they really they tried their best for sure so again there's no bad blood on my side i feel like the drama is what it is it's all over we had a great kvk everyone fought super hard everyone should feel really good about how their kingdoms performed here and truthfully it could have gone either way right like there were moments in calls where like our alliance leadership was like guys i think this is it like i think we're just going to take the loss so they really made us work for it i have tremendous respect for everybody that we fought up against and everyone we fought alongside and also massive shout out to our campmates one ee8 evil empire they already got their moon and we absolutely could not have held in king's land if they didn't turn up the heat they absolutely once they came back in full force i think on the 
the second day on Saturday absolutely popped off, right? Absolutely popped off. Some of the rallies from Super Shenron just absolutely clapping, baby. Like this dude, he was literally field fighting and rallying for like 24 hours straight. And of course, Vitaly, he hit 20 billion kill points this KVK. This dude is an absolute legend as well. So massive, massive, massive shout out to one EE8. Without you guys, we definitely could not have done this. Anyway, if you made it to the end of this video, it's a really long video. I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps push this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it. While you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video and drop a comment down below. Did you watch our KVK at all? Did you spectate it? I know some other content creators were streaming it as well. Let me know what you guys think about the KVK. Please, no drama, no BS, none of that. It's over. It's done with. It's water under the bridge. And this shouldn't go without saying, but don't go harassing anybody from any other kingdom, please. Like that's, it's a mobile game. Relax, chill out. Get out of Lost Kingdom chat. Okay. Anyway, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.